Hey, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. So this is the Light Phone 2. Very interesting device. And today I'm going to talk about mainly who I think this is for, whether it's good or not, and if you should buy one. Stick around to the end of this video and I'll let you know specifically the perfect person for this phone. Before we dive in today, this channel talks about minimalism, intentional living, tech, and more. So if that sounds cool to you, please consider subscribing and like this video so that we can trick the algorithm into thinking that I'm a better creator than I actually am. Light phone caught me. I found myself in this place where I needed a break from my iPhone and all the distractions that it can hold. And so I saw this little e-ink phone as a cool opportunity to take a step aside. Not to mention that Lightphone as a company, their branding, their videos, their promo stuff is just really cool. And the idea of a tiny little phone that hits the nostalgia point of a dumb phone era and the e-ink display that I love about my Kindle and just the fact that it can do very little and it really has no distractions to it, all of those sort of put me in a place where I found I really wanted to try this out. So I reached out to Lightphone and they sent me this review unit to try out for a little while. And here are my thoughts about this interesting little device. First, let's talk about design and build quality. First of all, it's all plastic. It feels a little bit like a toy. In fact, my daughters picked it up and pretended to use it as a phone, which that's what it is, quite a few times. And I mean, it's got some heft to it. It feels nice in the hand. I love how small it is. When you put it in your pocket, you barely notice it's there, especially against the weight of something like one of these iPhone Pro units. It's just way smaller and I don't know, it's just kind of cute, you know? And there's a lot of value to having a device this small. As you can see, the e-ink display is way teeny and Honestly, using an e-ink display on a phone doesn't make a ton of sense to me. And I'll get into that here in a minute. I love the idea and the concept and the theory because I do love my Kindle and looking at something like that and the idea of the amount of battery it probably uses as an e-ink compared to a regular full sort of OLED or LCD kind of panel. The idea is really cool. But let's talk a little bit about user experience. Typing on this e-ink display is appalling. And what you'll find in this video and my review of this dumb phone in particular is there are friction points to dumb phones like texting or typing takes a while. You will make mistakes. It takes a little bit to back up and correct them. It all makes you want to use your phone less, which is what light phone is all about. And I get that. And for that specific goal, it does that very well. If you want to never use this device, then get one. If you, gosh, that's so mean. But it kind of is the point, honestly. Going in between screens does the whole e-ink flash thing. It takes a hot beat, a hot minute to get from screen to screen. Even while you're typing out text, it's a little delayed and everything is just slower on this device intentionally, maybe, but for me and probably you, I don't know, it would probably be a little frustrating. Now, you'll notice, no camera. That's a big problem. For me, I'm a dad, I love taking photos, my wife loves taking photos of our kids, our kids love taking photos. There's no camera, so this means I carry another device with me to take photos with, which isn't all bad. I understand that as well. And I understand it wouldn't make really any sense to have a camera on this phone because you wouldn't really be able to view the images very well on the e-ink display. So I get why there's not a camera, but for me and my lifestyle and what I need, I kind of really, really enjoy having a camera on my phone. Even if it's a dumb phone, having a camera is just something I have kind of found is a necessity. As a father, I want to create these memories and I want to capture them. And so a camera is pretty big for us. Let's talk a bit about features and functionality. So I am glad they've gone with a podcast app on here as well as a music app. The music app, you have to put just your own music files that you own onto the device itself through the online dashboard. But with the podcast app, 
you can sort of look up on the dashboard certain podcasts that you enjoy and it will download new episodes automatically. I think that's a nice touch. I think those are two apps that they can be distracting, but more than anything, it's something you kind of do in passing while you're working on other things. And the fact that the device has Bluetooth, you can have Bluetooth headphones connected. You can also plug in a headphone through the headphone jack, which is a nice touch. So there are certain things like that. I think the phone got right, and I would hope that they'll continue to work on things like that, listening to customer feedback and adding apps over time to the device itself. Certain things, it's just, really hard to do. There are maps or directions on the device, but it's turn by turn. Like I said, it's very slow. I can't imagine actually driving somewhere using those turn by turn instructions. I feel like it might get delayed and I didn't test it. So don't take my word fully on that, but judging by the rest of the phone usage, I wouldn't really trust the maps feature on this. Maybe if you're walking, that would make a lot of sense for sure. Something I hit on earlier, it has a surprisingly terrible battery life. And I say terrible because it will last you all day, potentially. And honestly, it's a small device, so there's only so much battery you can cram in here. But you would think with the e-ink display, lack of camera, lack of data usage, that this thing would last you like a week, like dumb phones used to on a single charge. But I found if I put this in a drawer for more than two days and came back to it, it would be dead and I wasn't even using it. Could be a problem with this unit, That's that could always be the case on you know reviewing these products that companies send me, but for my usage, battery life, not great, which is just kind of a bummer. Something I'm also finding as I'm testing out a few dumb phones on the channel, if you are an iPhone user, Apple has done a great job of making it really hard to leave the Apple ecosystem, especially their phone, because when you use iMessage, email and phone number are attached to iMessage. In order for me to use my personal phone number and switch it over to this device, I would have to deactivate iMessage, which means that all of my group messages get notified that I'm no longer an iMessage. Those groups turn green. Everyone sort of hates that when you're in a group full of iPhone users. It just tears things up and I know I've heard news that Apple is sort of moving towards a way that that can be a little more friendly between Apple and Android and other devices, but for right now, it's a big pain in order to do that. So if you are thinking about picking up a light phone or really any other dumb phone that isn't Apple, you do have to think about that big switch you're going to have to make. Again, thinking about the practicality and use cases for this. If you want to start using a light phone, there's a few things I could see it doing well. For instance, if you wanna use it as sort of a weekender device so that you can be more present with your friends, family, or whatever it might be, personal alone time even, or in the afternoons after work, for instance, I would recommend getting a second phone line which you probably don't wanna hear because it costs money. You can get some low data phone lines for a relatively inexpensive cost per month, but I would get a separate phone line, a separate SIM card, and use that just for the light phone. The problem with that is you then have to notify all of your immediate friends and family that you would definitely wanna be able to communicate with on the weekends or at nights that you have a new phone number and if they can't reach you on your regular number, they need to try that number. Again, that's just a little annoying for loved ones around you, but if you don't have that many close friends or family, I could see that being an option. That's one way you could do it, and that's something I'm going to be trying out with, with the light phone, with um, another dumb phone that I have as well, and seeing what that kind of works like. Another thing I would recommend is I'm married, and my wife has an iPhone as well, and so being with her and having access to a smartphone that has data, you know, it's not mine, and I, I'm not gonna just be like using her phone to get on Instagram. So if I needed to use data for whatever reason, I could use my wife's phone. Or if you have a close friend, just being with someone in case you need sort of emergency services, especially using light phone. And I'll admit too, because of how slow light phone is with texting and even getting to the call screen, typing in a number, this is not a good phone for emergencies. If you needed to get a hold of someone very quickly, this takes a beat, it does. And that concerns me a little bit, especially as a dad and a husband 
which sort of leads me into my final point here, which is who is this thing for? I like the idea of a weekender phone, something that doesn't have a lot of distractions, but it's too slow and it, it's, it's just lacking a little bit. I see light phone as a great option for a single person who doesn't have kids, who doesn't have a lot of responsibility outside of themselves to be in communication with others. If you're going on a weekend trip somewhere by yourself or with your wife maybe, you know, and you don't have kids yet and you don't need to get in touch with anyone really, this is fine. You can shoot a text here and there to a parent or someone or give someone a phone call, which is fine too. But someone who doesn't need things to be quick, I could see this working for them. I, I tried even using this for just a few nights texting with friends and it was just so cumbersome to write out messages and I'm a big believer in being in community with people and being able to be, to have conversations with friends and loved ones. So this hinders even those essential tasks that we're used to having on a cell phone. And so that bothers me a little bit. But again, if you don't have those responsibilities, I could see this being a great option for someone. Secondly, if you just want to be that person who just takes that leap and fully transforms into this phone fully, you don't have a separate line, your friends and family know that you have this phone now, you tell them you're taking the leap, you tell them, hey, I'm gonna be less responsive, I'm gonna be shorter in my responses via text. If you're making that switch fully, I can see it working for you as well. But there are a lot of people you would need to notify to make that sort of change in your life. And that just doesn't work for me, but it might for you. However, I love the concept, I love the idea, and I think that a distraction-free device that does the basics is a great idea for us in this super distracting world that we live in. I think a future iteration of Light Phone, Light Phone 3 or 4, maybe if it doesn't have e-ink, which I kind of find hard to imagine they would go that route, could be something more along the lines of what I would use it for. But for now, Light Phone 2 is honestly just not for me. The phone is $299 brand new, which take it or leave it, I understand companies have to make money. That seems a little steep for me for this device itself, but it could be perfect for you. So that's all I got for this video. Thanks very much for listening to me talk about the Light Phone 2. I will be reviewing more dumb phones in the future. If you liked this video, check out this one. I think you're gonna love it. Like this video if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you all in the next one.